On slide eight, we return to the um, statistical tradition of random effects modeling in line with Laird and Ware with the addition of uh, errors that have autoregressions among them. And we have simplified it to have a random intercept only model in this case. And I said that that is the univariate part of the RICLPM model. And we see that more clearly if we redraw the top model equivalently as the bottom model, where instead of the residuals not having any variable really here, we introduce a factor that's measured by the observed variable with loading one and error zero. That's exactly what the residual is, right? The epsilon is not pre-multiplied by any loading, and it is the only residual that affects the y. So drawing it in this way, it looks more like the uh, univariate part of the RICLPM. We have the uh, relationships among the uh, latent variables down here, uh, not among the observed y variable as in the uh, classic CLPM. And that's the same situation as we have here, regressions among the residuals, not among the variables. Now here we've marked explicitly a measurement error of zero here. There is also a way to do uh, TSE error modeling, allowing measurement error. But again, as I mentioned before, you have to impose certain restrictions on the measurement errors. And it is a model that uh, has often has convergence problems. And again, we note that the classic CLPM does not include the random intercept and has regressions among the observed y variables. So quite different. Turning to slide 9, it's interesting to look at how the random intercept and the autoregressions impact the correlations across time. So we're looking at 10 different time points here. And 2 here means at time point 2, how high is the correlation with time point 1? And this is uh, the case where the random intercept variance is 0. So essentially, there is no random intercept but only an autoregression. So with an autoregression of 0 0.75, the correlation between the first and second time points is 0.75. And then it goes down, declines over time, and goes down towards 0 as the time increases. If you have a uh, higher random, well, if you have a random intercept variance, and then uh, it, the correlation does not go down to zero, but goes down to the uh, random intercept variance. This is all for a model which has the same unit variances for the observed variables. So the metric is easy to understand. Now, if you have a higher random intercept variance, uh, the floor gets pushed up. And this very high random intercept variance, uh, there's uh, not much change across time in the um, correlations because they're high throughout. On slide 10, we will um, then introduce dynamic models. And by dynamic models, I mean modeling models where y is regressed onto itself. So like the univariate parts of the classic CLPM. So again, here we have the autoregression of lag 1. y1 influences y2, y2, y3. y3 is not influenced directly by y1, but only indirectly. This model is standard in um, time series models, for instance. Now, th there has been uh, efforts to add a random intercept to these kinds of dynamic models. So we have a dynamic random intercept AR1 model, which we're going to label D for dynamic RIAR1. And it has been discussed in the Boland Brandt article uh, from 2010. And again, you, you find that in the references. So it looks like this. You have the uh, characteristic of regressions among the uh, observed variables, uh, although you have a random intercept as well. So the random intercept. Um, so the correlation uh, across time, or influence of i across time, 
uh, goes through the y variables and um, through the not only influences y1 but also y2 indirectly through y1 and directly so it has a different structure altogether than the um, ri clpm model now there's also a so-called arma version of this all of this comes from the time series literature and arma means uh, ar autoregressive moving average model it has been discussed more recently in the Cypher and others uh, article or articles in ORM. So the idea is that you have the uh, model up here, but you add the fact that the residual of Y1, or re more easily seen that the residual of Y2 influences the observed variable at Y3. So y3 is influenced by y2, the previous variable, the variable at the previous time point, and also by its residual. Very often that influence is negative, so that, for instance, if you have had a particularly high value on y2, on y at time point 2, that is the residual has contributed more here, then you will get a lower value of y3. So sort of going back towards the uh, what it was uh, before. Okay, on slide 11 then, we are introducing in this paper, in this new paper, uh, RI ARMA modeling. So here we're going to take the idea of a random intercept, no regressions among the observed variables, by regressions among latent underlying variables which have this moving average structure where the residual of F2 influences F3 while still having these zeros up here as in the RICLPM. So this model is similar in spirit to RIAR because of its separation of between and within individual variation also referred to as latent centering, as we discussed, that is centering using the random intercept i. But it adds this MA component to the model. And that has proven in our investigations to be a useful addition, necessary addition to fit models well when you have uh, many time points, when you get closer up to 10 time points. Perhaps you need it from, say, 7 through 10, whereas 3 to 6, you can, um, 3 to 6 time points, you can fit the model well using RI CLPM. For higher numbers, for more time points, you may need this RI ARMA model, which, as far as we know, is a new kind of model. And there is an equivalent measurement error version, just like it is for the RI CLPM, and we call it RI MEAR, where ME stands for measurement error. And that's m actually a model that's more general than the TSE model. But just like TSE, it often presents estimation problems that you don't see with this RIA, RIARMA, <laughs> RIARMA model. And we're going to try these models out in various applications. But let's just take a, finally here, a look at um, the correlation structure for these ARMA models versus the AR models. And here for simplicity we have no random intercept, so the floor is zero here in terms of correlation across long time spans. And the ARMA correlations are here at the top, whereas the AR correlations are at the bottom. So we see that the decline is or can be slower, the decline in correlation can be slower for ARMA models than for AR models. So if you let the R denote the lag 1 autocorrelation and B the MA coefficient, that is the coefficient for a residual at the previous time point influencing the outcome at the next time point, if the um, second, R, R, second autocorrelation is bigger than R square, then MB rather must be negative. And that's a picture we have here, a negative slower decay. If the second autocorrelation is smaller than R squared, which is the um, AR value, 
then B must be positive, fast decay. So that can happen as well, but uh, in my experience, it's, it's more seldom seen. Now this MI coefficient is often negative, so the correlation diminishes slowly over time, slowly then for the RIAR model. So what you can do, if you like, in the real data, you can take a look at the correlation matrix, look down the first column, that is the correlation between time point 1 and the rest of the time points, and the correlations typically decline. You can see how quickly they decline. Or you can look at the last row and go from the last time point towards the first, seeing how it increases. And if you want to, you can uh, compute the average correlation at diff different time differences uh, and plot that average correlation. And that would be a counterpart to a plot of this kind or the earlier plots that we showed. And you can then see if it looks like you have a very slow or faster decline, and you can look at uh, what the floor is if it comes down towards zero, which indicates no random inf intercept, <coughs> or if it comes down to a value higher than zero, where ra a random intercept is needed. <coughs>